Okay, we are live. Episode 140. It feels good today. God is good. Uh, let's go, Jake Kneller, Sweet Nothings, Peg Brown, Peg Brown Design. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Hello. Good to be here. Jake, let's do it. When did it start? What's it all about? Yeah, so uh, my co-founder Beth and I started the business in 2019, um, focused on truly healthy snacks, as we put it. Everything we do is organic, plant-based, no added sugar. I think very similar to what you preach. We're using whole real ingredients, you know, whole organic strawberries, not strawberry juices or strawberry flavoring. We make spoonable smoothie cups and squeezable smoothie tubes that both um, live in the frozen fruit aisle. Got it. So frozen fruit aisle, they're individual. I, I always like to give kind of the visual for somebody. They're individual, yeah. what, um, like squeezy pouches, almost like what would you would think of for a kid or? Yep. So that's the kid's line is the squeezable. You can think of it as a frozen gurgurt, but we're just blending fruits, veggies, water, basically. And they come in a pack of six tubes. And then the cups are basically the size of like a mini single serve hog and dogs cup. Um, and we're just blending organic fruits, veggies, and, and nuts in those. How, how did that start? What was the reason? Uh, my co-founder, Beth, came up with the idea initially, just constantly looking for healthy snack for her kids who were, at the time, you know, four and eight, and now are um, uh, in second grade and, and going into high school, actually, which is crazy. But um, she just wanted to find healthier snacks that she could have in the house that actually were clean. She was sick of going to the grocery store, getting excited that something was healthy and then turning the label over. So, so when did that start? When was the, when was day one of basically sales? I, some people start earlier than that, or they think they did, but like, what was the, what, the first day you sold something? First day we sold was summer of 2019. Summer 2019. Okay, cool. Okay. So a yeah. few years in, yeah. um, where did you go first? So somebody has this idea, they're thinking about it. Where did you go first as far as trying to make the product? Was it a commercial kitchen or was it your own? Uh, started in Beth's kitchen, it's where we first experimented. And then we went to um, a spot in the Bay Area called Kitchen Town um, that I'm sure you're familiar with. We were able to rent some space there. They had an ice cream maker, which we could use to make our smoothie cups. And the two of us made every cup by hand for a while. Got it. Okay. And then from there, so you're making it by hand. Um, you're putting it in the freezer. You're doing some testing. You pull it out of the freezer a day later. Hey, is it too hard? Is some, you know, is somebody going to be able to get a spoon in here? As far as getting into a squeezy pouch, I'm assuming, does that come later? Because that requires some, some different assembly. The, you know, how do, you know, how, what's the makeup of the, of the, the inner case, you know, is it a six count thing, you know, where you're really trying to figure out how is this thing going to be sold? And also my assumption is where, meaning you, were you thinking it was going to be frozen at first? Yeah. So that, that product line just came, you know, a few months ago, we launched that with Whole Foods in May um, as our, as our launch partner, um, after, you know, three years of learning a little bit more about the business. I'm very grateful we didn't start with that one because it is, to your point, a bit more complicated. You don't know what you don't know. And that's still the case, but we know a lot more than we did three years ago. And, and what would you say, since we're talking about, I mean, we all love to hear like kind of the, the obstacles, right? What are you seeing immediately from from what I'd consider is not first iteration, but we'll call first iteration to market for it. Is there, is there obstacles that you weren't thinking about? Yeah, I think on our front, there's a few. One is just figuring out the perfect box size for a product like this, where bagged frozen fruit comes in obviously different sizes. So we want to size it appropriately where it makes a presence on shelf, but isn't too big that it's screwing up a planogram. Um, that also varies for different retailers. So part of it was box size. Part of it is finding the right film material where it's easy to open. It's friendly for a kid to open. You know, it's not sharp on the edges. Um, little things you don't think of until you start to make it. <laughs> Got it. And, and is it a, a case pack? Is it, a, you, you made, did you mention six or is there an yeah. eight? Got it's it. Six. And so does it go singular back or double wide? Um, so it's, it's six tubes in a box, um, similar to like, you know, the way you'd buy popsicles or something. Yep. Um, and they're, they're pretty small boxes, but, um, they can, one insight we had 
um, and just, you know, seeing others in the market and getting inspired by that was it can be both vertically or horizontally merchandise. So one side, the text is all vertical, you flip it, it's all horizontal. So depending on the planogram, you can, you know, pick and choose based on the retailer. I'm going to bring up a brand just because it's the first one that comes to market, a, a brand like Once Upon a Farm, right? Um, you know, seasoned veteran um, behind it. So they, they've been through the trenches a bit, know what to look for. Do you, I think they're refrigerated, right? Um, do you look at brands like that? I, again, I, I kind of like it that you're like, you're, you, you're, you're similar, right? Um, also similar in feature, I would assume, but you're in a different set. Um, and so do you say, okay, let me just take a quick peek over here. What is, what's working over here? They had to spend millions of dollars for some research on this, that, and the other, right? So I'm just a guessing. So, and folks, this is just, you know, I'm just talking here. Don't get crazy yeah. on me. Um, and, and you, you do, because that's what you should be doing. I, I don't know why somebody wouldn't, right? You want to, you want to look at what do the other players who have had success or are, are successful doing, um, and try not to reinvent the wheel, um, does that help? I mean, what, what are the things that you can pull from that to say, okay, these are the things that we can be doing so that we can, you know, jump over a few of few hurdles that we would have crossed. Yeah. yeah. I, I think once upon a farm is a great example because it's a brand we do really admire. They share a lot of the same principles that we care about that you seem to care about as well. Um, they're targeting a bit of a younger demographic, which works for us. So, you know, as people transition, hopefully they, they transition to, sweet nothings. So look to them in the sense of, I think John is an incredible operator. I find his LinkedIn posts helpful. He's been generous enough to jump on a call with me to pick his brain a few times. Um, different form factors. Um, and as mentioned, they're refrigerated, or as you mentioned, they're refrigerated and we're frozen. So um, different, you know, supply chain manufacturing, et cetera, but love the brand. Okay, cool. And that's good. This is, again, this value add to people, they, they, whether or not they think, hey, can I do that? Or what? And then you just went a, f a step further. John got on the phone with them a few times. Like, yes, folks, there's people out there that will do that. And you'll come to recognize like who are the real ones out there, you know, not just all fluff and, 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 and the like, um, they're actually like helpful and they want to see you win. Um, there's a reason why those reputations hold strong. It's for things like that. It's for things that you wouldn't ever hear about. Let's put it that way. Those are the strongest ones. It's where you hear about them on Let's Eat, randomly asked a question about another brand, and then it comes to light like, yeah, he's jumped on the, like, that's love. Shout out, John. Um, so let's go into where uh, distribution points right now. Like, where's your, where's your, your customer? Where do you think they live? Uh, they like to throw buzzword market <laughs> fit and the like. It's buzzword, buzzword, buzzers. Uh, anyway, where's your customer live? Yeah, so I mean, early days, I think pretty traditional path in, in some ways. Early days, um, definitely saw it on the natural side. So the small regional natural chains were, were where we started in the early days for sure. Um, some spots in the Bay Area um, and, and down in SoCal. Um, today, have that kid squeezable line in Whole Foods and in almost every region. Um, the Spoonable Smoothie Cups are national with Sprouts. Um, with Kroger, we did a test in frozen fruit last August, and we're expanding to, to 1,300 Kroger's across 17 divisions this August after the test went well and that frozen fruit customer did enjoy this product. So trying to be really thoughtful where we're not trying to go everywhere tomorrow. I think there's plenty of places where our product, our price point, our flavors maybe don't work today. We want them to work there long term, but trying to be pretty disciplined. And Kroger was that first big conventional test and it's gone well. So I think we'll hope to do more of that in the future, but not, you know, trying to rush into 5,000 conventional stores tomorrow. That's a wonderful comment. Um, uh, you're, you're the last, what, that segment right there, somebody should just rewind. <laughs> um, I because I take it differently than what most would because I'm accepting of, of, of that comment and what it means um, and how you communicated it. It was communicated very well. Um, you're 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 cruising here and you kind of found a market fit. Um, I think it's natural price point. Give me like what's your what's a unit? So the, the single serve cups are two ninety nine and then the six pack of tubes retail for six ninety nine. 
six a uh, six pack of tubes is six ninety nine. See, that's not bad though. Um, again, this is just off the cuff. Um, that's not bad. I would have thought, okay, it might be a little bit more expensive. So natural, it's going to be your mom and, you know, the, the, you know, like a little bit more disposable income, that type of thing. But that you just, you just went the, the best, what I consider conventional test for a Kroger. Um, and you did well enough that you're going to get expansion. I really liked hearing that. I also liked the way that you, again, communicated it that, hey, we'll do that. We're going to take this test, but we can't just start blasting, blasting out here because we don't know what will, will happen. Um, smart. Very smart. Thank you. Um, cool. I liked that. Um, Jake, sweet nothings. Doing the thing. Uh, his info is there. Um, Peg Brown, Peg Brown Design, give it to us. Two minutes. Let us know what it's all about. Awesome. Yeah. So <clears throat> I worked previously for a flexible uh, packaging manufacturer, working with overseas, doing pouches, doing all kinds of stuff with art direction. Um, just anything, anything, any brands would come for. Um, I want, I one would come and um, absolute Petco, any kind of brand would come and need pouches and then also need maybe something conceptual. So I would help a lot with those types of projects. Um, I, the company went down kind of right around the pandemic. And since then I just get tons of referrals. So I've just been freelancing last couple of years, just doing peg brown design, just doing a lot of prototypes, doing a lot of walkthroughs, people maybe meeting with retailers like Publix and needing something in hand or just something for a pitch meeting with investors. So that's a lot of what I've been doing. Yeah. Digital assets, like high quality mock-ups for e-commerce, just all fun stuff. Anybody kind of throws it at me. I've just kind of given it a go. So yeah, it's been, it's been a fun, busy time. I like it. Uh, I yeah. like it. So, so Peg Brown designs, her info is there. Jake's info is there. Go check it out. I appreciate both of you. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of the week. Yeah, you Thanks too. Mark. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate Thanks it.